This is 5 on your side at 10. Chasing the Cup, sponsored by Car Shield. The Blues' good luck charm, Layla Anderson, beating the drum before tonight's must-win game six against the Avalanche. Unfortunately, the Blues' luck running out. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Brent Solomon. The Blues jumped ahead early against the Colorado Avalanche. The Avalanche later evened the score 2-2. Two two. It looked like the game was going into overtime then. With less than 10 seconds left in the game, the Avalanche scored the winning goal, beating the Blues 2-3. They will advance to the next round of the playoffs and we'll have extensive coverage of tonight's game for you. That's coming up at 10:15 on 5 on your sideline. We want to get you to an update now on that Wellston Market shootout that we first told you about at 6. Police say three people were shot outside of the North County business, including two female bystanders. We want to get to Robert Townsend now, who's outside of North County Police Cooperative Station with the very latest. Robert. In broad daylight, the parking lot at Wellston Market turned into a violent battleground. Police say just before 3 Friday afternoon, a man walked inside the store with an AR-15 style rifle in a sling and possibly under his shirt. They tell us the man did not threaten anyone, but several shoppers were alarmed after seeing the semi-automatic weapon. Moments later, when he stepped outside, police say another man armed with a gun confronted the rifle carrier and demanded his weapon. The man gave up his rifle, walked to his vehicle, and then grabbed another gun as the robber walked away. Investigators say the two men got into a shootout. More than a dozen bullets flew, hitting two women there to shop and shattering car windows in the market's parking lot. The man with the rifle took off. Incredibly, the gunfire wasn't over. Police say another man then shot the suspected robber as he lay on the ground. This is the same North County store where in June of 2019, 40-year-old North County Police Cooperative Officer Michael Langsdorf was shot and killed while investigating a bad check incident. Robert Townsend reporting that shootout happened about 45 minutes after Officer Langford's family and friends gathered at Wellston City Hall to remember him. Tonight, police are still looking for the suspects in today's shootout. They're asking anyone with information to call the North County Police Cooperative Station. Well, the search is on for a new Florence police officer accused of stalking an ex-girlfriend and then sending her nude pictures to her mother. William Gary Barnes II is facing several charges in St. Charles County. Prosecutors say Barnes put a tracking device on the woman's car after they broke up. Investigators say the police, use, uh, the police officer used his authority to intimidate and threaten people. Anyone with info on Barnes should contact St. Charles County Police. Well, we all know potholes are a big problem. So much so, St. Charles County may invest $20 million into getting them under control. Five on your side's Tracy Henson sits down with the county executive. $20 million does sound like a lot to spend on potholes, but it's not only pothole repair. The county also hopes to fix concrete slabs and curbs that have been damaged through the years. We have a big plan because we've got some big potholes out there. A big plan that includes a combination of American Rescue Plan funds, transportation tax funds, and a 50-50 municipality match to pay for millions in road repairs. Before any work starts, county council has to approve the initiative and then they'll have to find crews to do the work. Of course, a lot of this will be done by our own departments. Some of it will be done on contract uh, with uh, subcontractors. Hopefully, there will be the manpower to get it done. This proposal could potentially be improved by June 13th. In St. Charles County, I'm Tracy Henson, five on your side. And the county executive wants that work done by the end of the year. Travel this Memorial Day is expected to be the busiest we've seen in several years. Even though gas prices are at near record highs, travelers don't seem to be changing their plans. In fact, AAA says nearly 800,000 Missourians will drive out of town this Memorial Day weekend, and that's up 10% from last year. Donald Hillis traveled three hours to St. Louis from the Quad Cities with his wife and their five-year-old. Today, he filled up for less than 45 bucks. 
He says they made the right choice, bringing his wife's truck, which has a smaller tank. Gas is high, especially when you travel for work as well. Um, but things got to be done. So just a little bit less in savings, uh, you know, um, but nothing's going to stop the family vacation. Well, more than 3 million people in the country are expected to fly this weekend. 2.3 million will use the bus, train and cruise ships. Coming up, overwhelming grief in Texas now turning to anger. I trust that when I send my children to school each day that they're going to be safe. The mistakes law enforcement admits were made the day of the deadly school shooting. Plus, some advocates claim gun violence is the leading cause of death among children. We verify. That big weather system that kept us unsettled for the last few days, lumbering away from the bi-state region. What it leaves behind for the weekend is something you'll like. Anger tonight in Uvalde, Texas, after officers admit to mistakes made during the school shooting that left 21 people dead. Today, the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety said officers waited in the hallway of Robb Elementary for more than 45 minutes before confronting the gunmen inside a classroom. We also learned today children inside of the school repeatedly called 911 asking for help. Investigators say the commander at the scene believed the gunman was barricaded inside of the classroom and didn't think children were at risk. As many as 19 officers were in the hallway by the time agents went into the room and killed the gunman. The benefit of hindsight where I'm sitting now, of course it was not the right decision, it was the wrong decision. Investigators say the school resource officer was not at the school when the shooting started. The officer did respond when hearing the 911 calls, but actually drove past the shooter. And there are renewed calls for additional gun laws in the wake of that shooting. Brandon Lewis from our National Verified team looks into a claim that's being made by some advocates that guns are the leading cause of death among kids. Hours after a gunman killed 19 children in a Texas elementary school, Politicians and many others share the claim that gun violence is the leading cause of death for kids in the U.S. So let's verify. Are firearms the leading cause of death among American kids and teens? Our sources are the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and a study published in the New England Journal of Medicine on the causes of death among children in the U.S. Nationwide data compiled by the CDC shows in 2020 the leading cause of death for Americans aged 1 to 19 was firearms. The NEJM study shows that was the first time firearms surpassed motor vehicles as the leading cause of death. So yes, firearms were the leading cause of death for kids and teens in 2020. But the CDC hasn't published any more recent data. For the last two decades, motor vehicle crashes were the leading cause of death for this age group by a significant margin. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. So what can we verify for you? Reach out to us by sending an email to verify at KSDK.com. The annual Folds of Honor campaign, sponsored by Schnucks, is now underway. From now until July 4th, you can round up at the register. The money raised provides scholarships for spouses and children of fallen and wounded service members. Five on Your Side is a proud partner of the Folds of Honor campaign. Time now to get a check on your forecast. It's a holiday weekend, so Scott, I imagine many grills will be going pretty I soon. I suspect <laughs> so this weekend. A lot of folks getting outside, and this is what we waited for, it seemed like, all afternoon long, trying to get those clouds to roll out, and indeed the sun made an appearance in St. Louis. Right before the Cardinals took the field and the Blues took the ice, we finally saw some clearing in St. Louis. But boy, has it been a process. This big upper level system drifting away from us, but these upper level systems are slow movers and it's just taken a while to get it through here. But that back edge of the clearing now is off to the east of St. Louis. Lambert's down to 59, Kirksville's at 56, Springfield's 57 degrees. And it really looks like as we head into tomorrow morning, we're kind of on the chilly side. We 
think mid 50s in St. Louis. There's a little bit of a breeze right now. Our dew points 54, so we're thinking 54 to 56 tonight for St. Louis. Some of our outlying areas west of town could be down into the 40s and where the clouds are lingering off to the east, maybe just a little bit warmer because of the cloud cover, but still for this time of year, a little bit below average. We should start with bright skies tomorrow. Good deal of sunshine, nice warm trend through the afternoon into the low 80s. If you're traveling early tomorrow morning and heading up 55, be prepared by the time you get up by Springfield, up, uh, you know, towards Bloomington, heading towards Chicago. There may be some fog early in the morning, but that should lift. And the rest of the day is fine across the bi-state region. Lots of sunshine for us, just a few clouds in the afternoon. At the area lakes this weekend, water temperatures are mostly in the 60s, 70s and low 80s for highs on Saturday. By Monday, we're looking at high temperatures that will be back into the mid and upper 80s. So here we are Sunday. The breeze picks up Sunday, gets a little gusty. 89, your top temperature in St. Louis. For Memorial Day, we're right around 90 degrees. All the showers and storms should be well to our west and northwest, but some of those could be stronger across parts of Nebraska and maybe heading up into northwest Iowa. So if you've got some friends traveling there, just keep that in mind. Taking a quick look here, at the next 10 days, well, there you go. We're talking temperatures that take that jump as we head into Saturday and Sunday. You're rising up near 90 by Sunday, 90 for the high on Monday. Tuesday, we're at low 90s. And then you see temperatures back off a little bit towards the end of next week. Keep in mind, next weekend is a big weekend in St. Louis because NASCAR is coming to town. Speaking of cars, when's the last time you saw this? Yeah, we haven't really had a chance to get the car washed lately because it's rained so much. So you've got opportunities to do that for the next few days because our next chance for rain really doesn't roll in here until sometime on Wednesday, heading into Wednesday evening and should be pushing out, Brent, by the time we get to, say, Thursday afternoon. Not bad. I was just looking at the car thinking it's time for a car wash. It is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Scott, thanks for that. And thank you for your time. That's it for 5 on your side at 10. Time now for 5 on your side live.